in uh, Bianca? No. Okay. All right, so we'll call the meeting to order and uh, um, the purpose of the meeting is to go over the summary sheet that uh, Wendland put out last week and uh, try and get our heads back into the, the budget and uh, give this will give us a week between now and the next meeting to be able to go in and see staff or, or call staff, kind of try and if you need any clarification or find out if there's anything can be done. But uh, um, we've seen the budget go from, I, I don't know what it was at the beginning, but we did have one thing there that was in around before all these other things were added in here, it was like in around the 1% mark. And uh, um, this thing here just has, if everything was in there, that's what it would be. And we know that's not going to happen. So that'll be our next job is to try and narrow all these wants down or needs and uh, um, try and see how we can implement them into the budget. Uh, OMPF isn't even showing on here yet. So some of these things might be OMPF um, and which won't have any uh, impact to the budget. Um, it seems like, uh, like I did have someone say to me that it doesn't seem like we've done a lot as far as being involved in this. And, and I did say that every time we had a meeting and we asked staff to go back and uh, look at their numbers, they did, they've uh, knocked it down pretty well. Um, but these things here are things that council is going to have to deal with and, uh, and see what we're able to do and what we're not and uh, work, work the budget now. This, now it's our turn to, to get really involved. So uh, anyways, um, Wendelin, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, um, you can go through this. Uh, the big thing I've seen there and the huge one is the facilities and that's a new, that's a new line. So uh, 1300% increase. <laughs> I don't know how you get an increase on something that wasn't there before, but uh, um, anyways, it's, uh, it's there. Uh, a lot of those things are things that uh, Ryan talked about with his facility plan that he has. And um, I think he said in the fall there about some of the things, the main things that are important there are roofs. Um, once the things are covered in, we can deal with um, the other things. And, and my thing looking over it is when you look at the town hall expenses, that facility uh, plan that we have is going to be valuable in the future because the town hall was left for so many years that that's what happens if you don't do anything. It's, uh, uh, there's, I think it's $400,000 almost, uh, which actually I didn't think was that bad when I looked at it. I thought if that's, you know, to make it a livable building or a move in building and make more use of it, you can't do a lot for 400. So I don't know if that would cover it or not. So, but anyways, um, I guess we should just go through the summary sheet there, Wendelin, if you want, and uh, and we can refer to the other uh, the other sheet as need be. Is that what you were thinking, or? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, and we talked uh, yesterday as a management team that um, we know that the capital items are overwhelming in the facilities. So once we get that honed down to what council wants to do for 2021 um you know if you want to pick which items to do or do you want to just give a ballpark number to be added in and then we figure out where that money can come from if it can come from a reserve ompf those types of things so those are the things to that council needs to consider um, what their priorities are for 2021 in those areas. So I'll just kind of open it up if council had any questions or um, comments so that we can take notes here and, and get back to you at the next meeting with further details if you need it. So as we get into the details, like I know uh, Barry's involved with the, the library there and I don't, um, you know, I don't know if any of those things came up at your board meeting, Barry, but uh, you know, there's a lot of things on there as far as have they mentioned any of those things that they would like to see done this year? Um, there's not too many things they want done there this year. Both libraries, Jim, uh, Wendland was at this meeting too, while she'd been at most of the library meetings and uh, you know, like caulking around the windows at both libraries. Um, 
take a look at it. It don't need to be done. Two water heaters, one for each. Um, I haven't got my list right here right now. Um, okay. So that's the sort of things I like if you, you know, if you can on the 27th, we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty as far as uh, what we can do. So if you yeah, were to work. Go yeah, ahead. There is only one thing at the library that, uh, that uh, in Havelock was the um, was a steel door at the back, yep. and there there could be some lighting replaced. Uh, I know at Cordova there they were complaining there because the uh, the gal had just had an operation on her eyes and and there's been a light out for ages and anyway. Okay. We, we can we can so, go over that. We can go over that list. It can be drastically reduced. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, and, and all these things are just the things that were listed in that facilities thing. And some of those things might be over the next five years, probably, because none of it can happen overnight. But uh, um, like I think, like Ryan said, is the roof, uh, like we were talking about the medical center. And the only thing that I suggested to him for the medical center is, and I'm surprised we never asked before, is we should have a quote on what it would cost to put a peaked roof on, like a truss roof, just to get rid of that. We always do that and we didn't do it this time. So um, it would be nice to know where we stood as far as, it would change the look of the building too. So um, I think we should at least get a quote there, but you know, if we could before the next meeting would be perfect, but uh, it'd be nice to know where it stands as far as the 80,000 for a flat roof compared to what a truss roof would be. So. Yeah, the only, the only problem there is the air, con the air conditioning and heating yeah. on the roof, but they, like that could be uh, mounted on the ground and, and yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it'd be nice to know what it, what it would be. So, uh, um, but anyways, with those two things, uh, yeah, the best thing would be to, you know, work with Wendelin and, and the, the library board and make sure, like if it's just some lighting and things like that that need to be worked into it um you know we can see what we can do right so so i was just going to suggest that maybe ryan would um come on screen and if he could maybe give an overview of the different items because a lot of these items are coming back again this year from last year so they're just getting pushed forward each year and yeah. there's very little new items that have been added since last year. So I just asked him maybe to explain. Yeah. Good morning, Ryan. Morning, Ryan. Morning, Mayor Martin. Morning, Council. Um, uh, so what you see in front of you is basically the same uh, budget plan you received in uh, 2020. Uh, there's only been a few items added and that was uh, based on the 30 year um, facility condition assessments that were done. Uh, so every year council um, will expect to see new items added to these facilities to maintain them um, based on the plan that uh, council had previously committed to. So um, I guess my concern is that uh, there's some things on here that uh, that have been left and you know for the last three years they just keep you know coming on and and council hasn't you know provide any direction to staff in terms of to uh, in terms of removing it from the list and that they have no interest in doing it so um, at this at the staff level we're uh, we're maintaining that list and including it for council so it doesn't get missed or forgotten about um, <clears throat> but in terms of trying to catch up and and get uh, these buildings in a, in a better state or condition for public use uh, certainly uh, in the last meeting I expressed that uh, dealing with the issues with the roof um, on those specific buildings would be my recommendation on where you should uh, invest first. Um, just being that uh, that that's the most important part of these facilities, and we can and we can look at the interior uh, in the future and and what the uses are. But uh, certainly, if a roof has been failing for a few years now, um, it, it's recommended that we invest in in that replacement. So. Okay. Yeah. Like they're not going to go away at all. They're just going to be hanging around. So the longer that we leave them, but uh, um, it was, you know, there's quite a bit there. So 
we can only do so much in a year. So, um, but we'll have to prioritize. And, and like you say, if the roof is a priority, we'll have to figure out how we can get that, get them done after the, like, there's the one that's standing out right now. So, um, okay. All right. Yeah. This is a new, a new section of the budget and it's never been there before. So, um, I think it's going to be valuable over the next few years. Like, so, if, you know, we, we do have it in front of us and we can, we can deal with what needs to be dealt with. And, uh, and so we don't fall into the same problem we do with the town hall. So, and that'll be a big discussion, I think on the, you know, over the next couple of weeks here is the town hall. Like, uh, um, we've talked about different options and, uh, you know, maybe now is the time to, uh, talk about all the options and uh, see what we want to do there because it's a huge number, um, you know, and then we're going to have to prioritize. I think that's where I was going with our priority list and uh, strategic plan is where does it fit in? I guess it would be one of my things because we've talked about it for a lot of years, but we never do anything. So, but, uh, okay, well, let's, uh, the facilities was the big increase here. Like if you took that out of there, I don't know what we were at, Wendelin, but, uh, um, you know, and then there's some other things that we've been talking about that uh, need to be dealt with. So we can. Yeah. So you go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to take the capital items totally out of the facilities, um, the net effect would be 1.68% increase. Um, so it all depends on what items you want from that capital list and how it's funded. If you want it funded from a reserve, if you want it funded from OMPF, or if you want it funded from taxation to increase that 1.68%. Sure. Art, you had something? Yeah, um, I don't know if it was Barry's suggestion. I like kind of the idea of maybe throwing out a number, like obviously 728 is very high, but if we came up with a number for maybe each facility and let Ryan use his discretion in terms of what needs to be fixed, right? Maybe that could be funded. I'd like to personally see it funded through reserves and OMPF, but if, you know, if some taxation or something needed to be put in there, as long as it's not substantial, I guess I could look at it, but um, that would be my suggestion is, uh, you know, let, we come up with a number for each facility of what we want to put into it, look for ways to fund that through reserves and OMPF and, and let Ryan, you know, pick what needs to be fixed here. So that, yeah, going forward, that's what we're going to have to do is like, like you say, like if it's a, to build a reserve fund for a facility, uh, for the, this facility thing, uh, um, OMPF is dangerous. If it, it's usually used for like a one-time thing that you're not going to, it's not going to affect the taxes later. Um, but uh, yeah, between, the, there should be a reserve. We should build a reserve and um, in the future, these things will all be taken care of out of that reserve when things are due, like we do with everything else. So uh, I think if, if I'm thinking right here, when is that? There actually is a component of the administrative reserve for facilities. So that could be carved out if council wanted to create uh, a new reserve for facilities themselves. And we can include that with new GL numbers in the budget. Okay, well, that's something to talk about over the next week or so. Maybe you can take a look for that to see if that would help us. Like Hart said, if there's a reserve there that we can pull some of this from, that would be that would be helpful. Um, yeah. Saves on the taxation side of things. And um, okay, yeah, so that would be something hard to keep keep up on. So, um, so the. Um, yeah, so as far as facilities, that's the only thing I suggested is the, uh, um, to take a look at another option for the medical center roof. Um, I don't know what else, is there anything else here as far as the buildings that anybody had any questions with? The town hall is a huge list. Um, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> um, but anyways, we'll have to look at it over the next week and then maybe the next meeting we can talk about uh, where we wanna go there. Um, so, but uh, there were some other things there that uh, were outside of the uh, um, facilities and that's with regards to uh, the recreation master plan and uh, 
Um, there was some things suggested in there that we were, um, you know, that someday we're going to have to do something. And I was hoping it was this year that we could uh, start looking at some of those things. But uh, um, does the council got any questions as far as the next part of it there? Like, a, I'm not going to sit here and keep talking if you guys, you, you've been looking at this too. So, um, Maybe I'll start with you, Barry. You've been you've been reading it pretty thorough here. Do you have it in front of you, or do you do you have the list in front of you? You're on mute. You're muted there. So. Oh, I don't. I okay. I don't even know where it is. I'm looking through my paperwork here, but. Okay, that's. Could uh, maybe Bianca share it to the screen. Yeah, yeah, that would work too. It's uh, it's harder for me to see everyone, but yeah, if you speak up, if you want to speak to it, in case I can't see you, but yeah, if you could share the screen with the summary, we can go through them. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll just go. Through. We did the library ones there. Um, I think we did most of the building, like you know, the municipal building there. There's a few things there, like Hart says, if we could pick a number out that uh, we can use, you know, to try and prioritize what needs to be done um you know that would that would be helpful so um, yeah, I, I think jim if we uh, some something like what hard has said if we can pick out what has to be done you know and pick at it each each place and and at least we start yeah you know, we're not leaving one building so it deteriorates um, the only thing we can't really start on is the town hall because we know we're behind the eight ball before we even start. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So we if we move past and then we go into part. Uh, um, so the library, the, the facility costs were moved to facilities. Uh, is that you got that in there, Wendell? I'm not sure what that means, but uh, so some things have been moved out of other areas into facilities have they yes so for example um the hydro and the different uh items from uh admin from the municipal building um from the parks department they used to have stone hall town hall um for the sewer water heating etc that's all been moved into the facilities department now so that we're capturing all the costs of all the different buildings in one area. Okay. All right. So that's uh, so that's happened with all these ones. I see you've got them added or are moved um, on the sheet here. Yeah. So. Okay. So the stone hall, town hall, and the uh, the the facility costs from them are all moved into facilities. Yeah. So there was just a shift from different departments into the facilities. So that's part of that large number. And then also the um, additional potential staff member for a contract position to do the cleaning is in the facilities um, area. Okay. Well, um, what, what uh, benefit is to shift those? It just gives council a better snapshot of um, looking in one place to see what it's costing you per building. So it was kind of broken out. Um, some things were in parks and rec, some things were in and men, and it was very hard to kind of flip back and forth. So this way it's gonna be a little bit clearer on what you're actually spending on all your buildings. Thank you. So that adjusted the, the numbers in all the departments like as far as admin then when with that reduction you've got a negative number there yes uh, th that's a part of it is some of the that's a part of the negative number yes okay all right then okay so if we uh move past the that there to the uh we've got the icip grant we're still i was hoping to hear here in the beginning of this month here i got a meeting with her tonight i'll see if i can see where it's at um, it's been a year, over a year now since we applied for that and it's still alive, <laughs> um, but we need to know where it's at. So, uh, cause that's going to have a huge impact on everything we do. So, um, I'll see what I can find out, uh, tonight, Bob and I met with, with, uh, our MP, uh, before Christmas 
and we were told that things will be coming out here early in the new year. So I think it's early in the new year now. So let's uh, see where it's at. But uh, um, so, so the Matheson Park grant there, we've applied, yeah. we've applied for that grant. Yeah, so the grants that we've applied for, um, we haven't included them in the budget yet until we actually get the approval. So we're okay. hoping to get those approvals before we finish budget. So if it is, then we can add it in, but it shouldn't, um, the, the reasoning behind if we are approved, then we, if there was money coming out, it would be coming from OMPF. So it won't affect the bottom line of the 1.68% at this point. Good. I'm glad to see we have a technical person there. Bianca, you must have been able to move the faces around. Now I can see all of council anyway, so good for you. <laughs> Normally it's all over the place and I can't see who's talking, but uh, perfect. So um, anyways, the, uh, okay. So the next uh, um, was the splash pad that we've, was part of the master plan and that's what I meant as far as uh, to try and get any of these things shovel ready it's uh, um, you know we're gonna have to have some discussion this week to see how we could you know get something started there if that's what council wanted to do um, but over by the 27th we should try and come up with a plan and that's part of the priority thing if it's a priority um, you know I know it is for me and others but it's just how we do it it's going to be the, the tricky part um but that'll be some good discussion and maybe at the next on the 27th we can we'll have some sort of an idea that's where it comes down to the ompf and the uh um and the community itself but uh, um anyways we'll uh has anybody got anything with regards to that um hard i know you've been vocal on it do you have anything to add to that Just learn how to use my computer. Sorry, I did that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you, Jim. Uh, this is something we've been talking about. Well, splash pad pool, a whole bunch of different ideas, but whatever we settle on, I guess. I guess right now we're on splash pad. Uh, the community's been talking about this for a number of years. Um, we, as a council, have been talking about it for a number of years. So, um, as long as, as you said, the the money's there, that I think it's just something that. Uh, we should get on top of as soon as possible. Okay. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, it's like Hart says, it's something that's been there for a long time. And we just bring it up, we talk about it, and then let it go. Um, there's so many questions to be answered before, you know, like, okay, we're going to start, we're, we're going to put in a splash pad in the conversation. Where are we going to put it? you know, uh, carry on and on and on. And there has to be a plan. And so far there hasn't been any plan. <laughs> we just say, yeah, a splash pad would be nice, but you know, we're not getting it. So, so uh, we, we got some work to do here too. And, and I don't know, with, with some of these things we should prioritize, but we should have some discussion on them. You know, like pick a topic, have some discussion and, uh, Let's see how we can go from there because we're just bouncing all over the friggin' uh, list here, not not really getting anything done. You either want it done or you don't want it done. Let's make a decision. Yeah. So that's as I say over the next week or so. Uh, it, it's going to come back on the 27th, and um, you know I've talked to Ryan about a little bit, uh, you know, to work with the master plan because that's why we did it. So. And this was what came out high on the master plan. So now, like you say, Barry, we got to start uh, focusing on what, what was there. That's why we did it. And how can we do it? And uh, where's it going to go was a part of it. I think there's a little bit of that in the master plan. Um, so, yeah, that's, let's get a plan going here and let's uh, see what we can do. So, um, yeah, we have to get together on it because, you know, where is it going to go? Um, maybe we're... The master plan, maybe some people don't want it there, you know, like maybe, uh, you know, the rest of council say, no, I don't want it there for a reason or whatever. But 
I, we got to have discussion on it and we can't just come back, you know, as individuals and say, you know, well, we're going to put it here. We're going to put it there. We're going to have to sit down and talk about it, you know, like get serious. Yeah. So that's where I suggest like, you know, Ryan, we will be, we will be getting a hold of you and we will have some, be having some discussion on that and see, um, you know, you can pull out what you've got there and we can give you our thoughts and we'll try and see if we can come together on something here. That's, that's right, Barry. So. And we might um, have to have it done before the 27th, like, you know, like yeah. make it a constructive, yeah. uh, constructive meeting. Exactly. So, okay. Um, yeah, and the 27th, yeah. Okay, because that's going to be the whole budget, so it's going to be a busy day. So, um, okay. Um, the next thing uh, we had on here was the municipal entrance signage. That was with, with uh, economic development, and um, I guess that's under Laura. I don't. Is Laura here like, on the screen or? Um, I didn't see her. No, neither did I. Okay, so John's so, there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, good morning, Mayor Martin. Uh, Laura's not on the call. We can ask her to join if you wish. Yeah, we can come back to that. I, I wasn't really sure what that meant, uh, quotation obtained to replace all the township, I guess all the signs. Uh, and I thought we had a reserve there, um, like a 10 year thing they were supposed to be replaced. But I know we used it for the, the main gateway sign a few years ago. Um, so I thought we did have a reserve for that Wendland for the sign specifically. I'll look into that, but um, that's where the, the ship came from out of a min into the new planning economic development um, portfolio. So that was a request of council, the last yep. meeting that you wanted new entrance signs. So I'll look at that and see if there's um, something there. Yeah, council can help me with that, but I, I just kind of remember that we did do the gateway sign one time, the, the lady came back and did, uh, some repairs to it and I thought we used the the, the reserve for that but I could be wrong. I, um, it would have came out of the admin reserve when um, economic development was under admin. So I'll look and see if there's a specific line item for signs. Okay because then that would save like like goes back to Hart's thoughts there on the reserves. If we have reserves for these things um, we should make sure we're using them for that. So, yeah. so um, okay. And I, this one here again is, is Peter. Peter's on there. Vehicle repairs. I don't know. Is that for a general of the whole township? Or um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wasn't sure what. Uh, it just has a general increased equipment repairs to cover significant vehicle repairs. Uh, um, I don't know which vehicles it is. Wendland is that. Uh, so there, we just had, a, is Peter on or? Yes, yes, yes. Good okay. morning, Mayor Martin and Council. Sorry, I just slow getting the button going. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, our single axle has, uh, uh, it's still at Winslow's right now, but it's getting repaired. It had a major uh, a fault with the EGR cooler. Uh, the bill there is just uh, between, I think, 15, uh, almost 15 and a half, 15, $15,600 in that neighborhood for that repair on the single axle. So it's, uh, it was quite extensive. Uh, we did get lucky with the DPF. Uh, the EGR cooler uh, was sending coolant out through the exhaust and uh, we were lucky that uh, they could uh, save our DPF or it would have been a significant amount more, about another 3,000. So it, uh, it's just a, a part failure. It's uh, no fault to any person or anything like that. It's just yeah, a bad part. So, what year yeah. is that truck, Peter? Is that uh, it's, uh, 2014, uh, Mayor Martin? Wow, time flies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was yes. yesterday. <laughs> we went through similar. We went through a similar thing with actually the our Western Star uh, not too long ago with the exhaust, and uh, it uh, it was quite extensive too. So, it's the new uh, regeneration, the the systems they have put into uh, for pollution control. So, yeah. Okay. The budget originally on the single axle was at 3,800 for repairs and maintenance. And uh, I was talking to Wendland that we're gonna have to go through our equipment uh, and get our rates adjusted. So that uh, can be compromised. And, uh, but uh, with 
knowing the bill was at that and uh, the, the budget from last year was only at 3,800 for that truck for repairs and maintenance. So that's why we increased it uh, to cover that specific cost. Yeah, 3,800 doesn't go very far, like as far as like, it's all right maybe for the small trucks, but that's not even gonna change the tire on it for, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then there were some repairs that are gonna be needed as well for the sidewalk um, machine. Right, Peter? Yeah. Yes, uh, it, it, uh, we're looking at replacing the back hopper with the, actually holes of sand and salt on it there. And uh, it was, uh, I believe it to my memory says, it's just under $9,000 to replace that. It's getting pretty worn and we've replaced a lot of the parts as it is already, but uh, it's uh, it's getting to the point that it needs to be replaced just for, you know, the salt and the rust and that as well, so. Okay, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, um, on that sidewalk, uh, Plow, uh, when, when's it due to be replaced, Wendell or Peter? I believe it's uh, in a couple of years, Peter. It's a 2011 is what year yeah. it is. <clears throat> I thought it was like a 15 year thing, but I can't remember that exactly. But that's what I was gonna ask too, is what, when's that thing? Yeah, I think it's a 10 year. It, it is so coming close. Uh, I think it'd be next year or the year after. But we, we can check on that and get back to the council on the 27th. Yeah, it, that was going to be another topic of discussion. Uh, we did spend some money on that machine last year, uh, and uh, it's the machine is actually in pretty good shape, so we could probably extend it, uh, the life of it, uh, a few more years if we replace the hopper on the back. So that, uh, that may be a topic for another, another day, but uh, that was the thought on that, uh, just to get uh, kind of an idea from council if we were going to keep it for another few years or not. Yeah, so that'll be the discussion. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, well, what is the price of a, of a hopper? Uh, that one there was a double auger and it was just under 9,000. It was 8,700, I believe, Barry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Councillor Palmer. Yeah, it was just under $9,000, 8,700 with tax, I believe. Okay, and then we have to pay to have it put on and all that other rot. So you're looking at, you know, 15,000 anyway. Um, through, you, Mayor, through you, Mayor Martin, Councillor Palmer, it, it, it's just an attachment. Uh, we take it off and on um, spring and fall ourselves, so it's uh, there's no there'd be no extra cost to it. It'd be just the it'd be just the price of the actual attachment. Yeah. Okay, that's the one that drags behind. Yes, it's yeah. right on the back of the machine. Yep. All right, Peter. So that'd be good discussion. Thanks, like, Peter. Like you say, Barry, that'd be good discussion. I, I had a question there too, but I'll leave it till um, this week. I've kind of mentioned to Peter about another option, but uh, if it's in that good of shape and, you know, like if it's had all the work done on it already and it's crazy, that's like buying a sander for the back of the truck. It's the same price for that little wee one as it is for one in the back of the pickup. So um, anyways, it's, uh, it is an expensive unit it's a good unit it does what it's supposed to do but it's limited on what else you can do with it so um, that's where the discussion i think will come go ahead barry no yeah, well that's that's where i was going at is uh you know you see some of the the other municipalities now with uh, like a bobcat on the front or whatever you want to call them but then it's a multi-purpose uh vehicle you know they have them closed in for the winter and, and uh that I think that's something we'll have to look at because um, multi-purpose says the word. You know what, Barry? It's scary. We're kind of thinking the same here, and I'm kind of getting a little paranoid here. So yeah, that's uh, it's exactly what I was thinking. So um, and that's what I mentioned to Peter is the, looking at the other ones. There might be more use, uh, but if it's I didn't realize that we with all that work last year. Maybe this isn't the year, but it's something to start thinking about. So that'll be good discussion. Yep. So, okay. Um, thank you, Peter. That's, uh, um, and then the roads, uh, the King Street, looking at the drainage issue there, um, that's gonna be something that we're gonna have to uh, speak to you more about and come up with a plan there, eh? 
Yes, uh, Mayor Martin. Yeah, we should uh, we should discuss that and and see how we what or if there's any other options that council would like to have a look at. Um, <clears throat> that uh, that price is just the actual you know uh, 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 place of materials and that kind of thing. So. Um, and again, we could probably do uh, some of this uh, work ourselves, right, with uh, with the public works department. So it uh, that would maybe cut that down a little bit. But uh, that was just a an estimate. And again, yes, we're we're open to doing the work ourselves to help save some cost and and uh, <clears throat> and have another engineering company maybe as well look at it to see if they have some other ideas for us. Okay. Yeah, I can't see Dave. So if Dave has any, just yell, Dave, because. Uh... Um, yeah, I'm not seeing you there. So, um, anyway. oh, well, I guess that's why you didn't see me. I was waving a couple of times, but that's okay, Mayor. We'll just carry on. Oh, okay. Do you have something then to add there, Dave? I can see you no. now. No, we can uh, just move forward. We're past that. Okay. Um, all right, then. The, uh, so, the Fish Hatchery Road. Uh, um, there again, we'll have to, uh, um, there's some options there that Wendelin's talked about as far as the area rating and things like that. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a part of the budget, but we'll have to look at all our options and uh, and talk to her about her suggestions. So um, anyways, there is, there is some things that could be done there and uh, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I think we're going to have to have way more information before we, uh, you know, we, we can't proceed with what we got. Like, this is like pie in the sky. Uh, it's going to cost so much. Well, it all depends. Do we have to have any minor variances? You know, do we have to buy property or, or whatever? I, I have no idea. But these, these questions should be answered uh, before we take anything like that on. And, and if, like you say, if it's uh, going to be shared, um, maybe the people back there should be notified too, eh? That, you know, are they in favor of it? Uh, can they, they, because their taxes are gonna go up as soon as, you know, they have a, a road. Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're aware of the area rating. I think that's where it came from as far as if they had to, uh, yeah. help out with it that way the but like you say the, and the survey part of it is going to be a big thing i think one of the things and i was waiting for another piece of paper to come is at the, the first look it was a 60 foot right away and now it's a 40 foot right away so all them concerns of uh fencing and all those things are gone now because like you say there was some so i'm waiting for an updated uh copy of that um i'm going to talk to peter today about it but uh um, there is some things that changed. There, there was like three different things from Engage and they, they got changed and I, I, we're kind of getting mixed up between some of the things that we looked at. And yeah, we have to know what we're talking about and that's going to be a big part of this. But uh, um, yeah, and like we said, as far as trying to get some help for the surveying and things like that uh, would be, and they've already done a lot of work on, on culverts and things like that. So um, and, yeah. we have, and we have to decide uh, where, how far in there are we going. Yeah. Because you know yourself, if you go to that bridge, you just inherited another bridge. And yeah. you know what that costs. So that was the discussion with M&R, because right now we're only talking about to the bridge and not past the bridge. So um, I think that's all Peter's been looking at too. So, um, but yeah, that's... Uh, there will be some discussion. It's on the list here, and that's uh, uh, I know from what I've seen in the last week or so, they're pretty excited that it's still still hanging on here. So, um, so we'll we'll have some discussion. And Peter has done a lot of work on this, and uh, but there is some things that we need to M and R needs to come to the table too. So you're right. So, um, so the next one here is the. The cell here, um, expand the cell over at uh, the wastewater treatment plant. And that's something I think we're unanimously wanting done. So we need to get some more information and see how we can do this uh, um, to get it moving forward because we need to we need to be proactive on this and, and try and uh, 
to make sure it's, it keeps moving because it takes a long time to do it. So go ahead, Barry. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the EA, mm -hmm. I would like to know if it has been applied for or not. You know, I'm, I'm getting two different, uh, two different thoughts on this. They're, you know, they went to the, the old lagoon and we can get an EA for that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to cost so much money and, and uh, then you're going to have to repair it. Um, furthermore, we're, we're getting into a, a stink hole for the people that are over there. If you open that uh, or try to open that lagoon again, how much money is it all going to cost for the, you know, to go to the lagoon? I think we should be focusing on an EA for what we have and do it properly and not have a whole bunch of taxpayers disgruntled and uh, money wasted. But we, we don't have any true figures on what it would cost for to fix the, you know, the hole in the lagoon and yeah. how, much, how much it would cost for to get the EA and, and the approvals again brought back on board. So that's, I think we've got to concentrate on our, on our newer equipment. And that's, that's just my own idea because I don't have any, any facts or figures on, on the lagoon. And, and we're not going to get any this winter because uh, how the hell can you tell when you, you know, you'd have to go in and snow plow. Yeah. So, so I think what we can do for the 27th meeting is like I say, I've, I've been hearing pretty consistently that this is important to all of us. So if it is, we need those numbers before we can finalize the budget. Uh, we need to know where we're going and what we can do um, for the final step of the budget. Um, yeah. You know, so so between Peter and Wendell and, and Bob, uh, if they like, like I'm, has anybody else got any other ideas? Like, it's not, it's it's almost one of those things. It's not really an uh, uh, whether we do or we don't. It's something that we need to start moving forward on. Um, you know, for the future and because it takes so long to get it done. This could take, you know, a few years. So we need to keep things moving forward. And uh, um, so for the next meeting or before we finalize the budget, we need to have some more details on this, on what it's going to cost and how we can do it. Like, so that's just my thoughts too. Yeah, well, so, it's, it's a good thought because uh, uh, I know it's going to take time. I know the government has said they're speeding up the EA, but uh, it's, you know, if it's going to cost two or $300,000 for to get, get the old lagoon fixed up so we can use it for a, for a holding tank, uh, that could go into a new facility too. It's, they're going to have to do a, an EA there on, on that too, I would imagine. Yeah. I just don't want to see money wasted, that's all. Okay, is there any other comments or questions from council there with regards to that? Can I just make a comment on that? Sure. So um, right now the um, in the capital items for um, waste, well, not waste, sorry, sewer, um, the uh, lagoon um, study, if, that, if that's what it's called, is in there for approximately $9,000. And that's just a tabletop exercise to find out what they can do. Um, Peter and I will go back and check with Aqua um, because council will have to decide whether or not they want to still um, go forward with that tabletop exercise or shift that money to uh, cell three. So um, those are some of the answers we'll have to need for the 27th, but we can definitely get some answers on what it would cost for potentially cell three. I know there was an estimate a couple of years ago and they might be able to just guesstimate a, a new estimate that's up to date. Yeah, like there's a, yeah, we need to know all the numbers. Uh, like if it's $9,000 to do a study on the lagoon and it's, you know, and it's feasible to use it to give us more time, well, that's good. I think that's all we need to know, but, uh, if it's going to be a huge number there that like Barry says could go towards um, the expansion, we do, we might have a little time to be able to do that. So that we need to know everything so we can make a proper decision, I think is what we're saying here. So Barry. 
Yeah, and further to that, I'll, my first question was, is have we applied for an EA for the new cell? That's, that's what I want to know because we're going to have to do it anyway. And that, let's not prolong the, the agony. It's, uh, I know after the meeting there that we had with Aqua, they, they thought, oh, just great, we can go into the lagoon again. Well, how long, how long can you do that? Because they're, they're not going to give you a, um, a license to stay on uh, with that forever, neither. So, but if we don't have a license for, for to start the EA on, on the cell, we wasted another year, eh? So I, I'll I also follow okay. up with Aqua on that matter because that was actually passed in the 2020 budget, so they can actually proceed on that already. So yeah. I'll follow up with Peter as well. Okay, thanks, Wendell. Could I make a comment on that as well? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, I was uh, yesterday. Uh, I met with an uh, engineer from Jewel uh, to review some plans for the long-term care. And uh, we're in the process right now of um, going back and finding the reports from Engage and from Aqua on the flows. And we have uh, Leah uh, right now putting uh, some charts and uh, flows together for from the work that was done this past spring with uh, Sewer Tech. Um, so we'll, we're, we're in the midst of gathering some information. And uh, the, uh, the engineer from Jewel, uh, very, very smart man, and uh, that was his biggest concern. So we do kind of have a third party that will be able to check, and uh, in coming in the next couple of months, we'll be able to uh, add the next uh, flows into the sanitary and see where they actually, um, how much of a, how much did the actual repairs uh, from sewer attack actually made a difference in the, in the spring uh, thaw, uh, high flow waters. So, uh, so we're gathering some information and then, uh, yes, and Leah's got a really very nice chart going that will explain all this. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, couple months, we'll be able to see some differences in the flow. So. Okay. All right. That's exactly what we need, Peter. That's uh, the only way we can make a decision is if we have all the information. So, um, Okay, is there any other questions there for Peter with regards to that? Not seeing anybody there. So uh, um, this waste in the sea can, it was a suggestion. Um, you're pretty quick, Wendell, and I get it on there. I, I suggested this uh, looking at our neighbors again and, and wondered what would, it, I thought it was revenue neutral um, as far as looking at uh, putting a couple of sea cans over at the uh, the waste site for something we talked about before as well years ago for the reuse and uh, um, trying to save on the stuff going in the bins and the bottle drive that we were doing. So uh, something that I had mentioned and I don't have to do it today, but it's just uh, the the advertising that you see around some of the some of the commercial places around here, there's some income that comes in on them that could probably pay for these in the first year um, to have them there. And it would be a source of revenue for some of our community groups in the future um, to go along with the bottle drive. Um, I could see where you could make probably $20,000. I think it was 20,000, it's like $300 an ad. And if you get 20 signs, I guess not 20,000, but uh, there's, a, there's a bit of money to be made there. Um, and we could also, do something that we once again talked about, but never did anything as far as trying to, uh, you know, keep things out of the weather, give them 20 days, tag them. They don't, if they don't go, just get rid of them. But uh, um, it, it, they do this around some of the other sites around the, the area and it uh, saves on the stuff going in the bins. That's all uh, at the exchange. You take your garbage over and you take something home with you. So, and then get in trouble when you get home. Uh, anyways, it's uh, just a thought. If it was revenue neutral, that's what I was hoping it would, uh, you know, there's a possibility there. So, um, and then the page I've got here is the, uh, oh, the water. I think uh, Barry mentioned it uh, about the ozone, um, you know, and where that was at uh, to try and clear the water up. Um, you want to speak to that again, Barry? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's treatment that will uh, clarify the water at, at well three. And it would be, I know it sounds expensive, but it's not when you've already got all the equipment, you got the building, you got everything. The only thing is we don't have clear water. Um, I know uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux was over to the ozone treatment when they were doing these, the uh, test and myself. And um, it's amazing how, how clear the water came and, uh, you know, some of the report we got back, Makwa too, they, there's something like, uh, like a lawyer, they, they, I read through a lot of it and, and they got repetitious things in there, like uh, stuff that was in there four years ago um, about the um, ultraviolet lights and, and the ballast, you know, costing so much money. Well, as everyone, well, we should all know, so that that problem has been fixed you know it, it's probably two or three years ago so and you go through and you, you see a bunch of inequities like that so um we do have lots of water there we, we got lots of it for an expansion and it makes the loop so that you know we uh we can go both ways on it and uh, if one well if one of the wells shut down in the park you know, we still have lots of water there and we, for the future, for our, if we're going to develop, we got to have um, potable water. They say it's potable. It looks like it's come out of a pot right now. You know, they, they pump it to waste for 15 minutes, but uh, it's still not, still not clear. So the ozone is a treatment that's, it's outstanding the, the way it, that it treats the, uh, the water and it's and it's not that expensive for what for what we have invested yeah um, that's my own my own thoughts on it it's so so there again we need we need more uh information to be able to like you're right it's, we have all the stuff there if there's a way of using it and uh and the cost can be justified um uh, and because we're already struggling with water rates now as far as uh, the cost of doing things, but it is, everything's there. So that some of those costs maybe are irrelevant and we can uh, um, look at it. So uh, is there any other questions with regards to that there? So Peter well, might wanna Peter? chime in on this because we did receive um, some further quotations from Aqua, and he can maybe um, go to that and discuss that a little bit further. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Martin. Actually, the um, the qu quotations has come back, and uh, I uh, came back into uh, CAO Bob there, but uh, they give us three quotations, uh, and uh, they're pretty well the same, I think, as uh, what uh, they had the last time, um, ranging from lowest to highest. And uh, I think uh, discussing it with Bob that uh, we kind of were looking at the high one uh, just for uh, the best solution to the problem. So, uh, and, uh, but the, uh, <clears throat> I think the recommendation from ACO was also the highest if, uh, if uh, it's yeah. It's I know it's a lot of money, so uh, it's, it's it's kind of a touchy situation. But it is drinking water, and uh, Bob and I both thought that the, the higher the higher number would be the one that we would like to recommend. So um, maybe uh, the next council meeting that we can um, gather that information for you to write to the penny and and see how or what we can do uh, for funds or grants or uh, to put it in the budget. So, but we do have some numbers there. So. Okay, so those numbers will have to come out, like you say. Um, we can come in and, or we can get a hold of you and get all them. But for the next meeting, you, we should see them here, and everybody should see them, and then we can uh, decide where we're going to go. Um, you know, if it's possible, we should do it. So, um, yeah. So if you could get them brought out at the next meeting, but in the meantime, like I keep saying, in between now and the next meeting, it's a good opportunity to, to get your head around these things as far as, uh, you know, if it's really possible or not, because it's hard at a meeting when the numbers come out and you, 
you're not going to make that quick a decision. So, but yeah, if you could bring them out, Peter, that would be good. Um, so Bianca, you probably think I'm jumping all over the place. My sheets dropped on the floor, so I'm probably not in the right order here. So if you're wondering where is he going here, um, the other sheet I've got is the top of it is the animal control. Um, I think it was probably earlier, but uh, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Right yeah, yeah, it's uh, okay. Thank you. So the uh, the cat by law here. What was the number on that there, Wendelin, as far as uh, the cat part of it? Um, I'll defer to Bob because he received that information from the Humane Society. Well, they did that uh, that um, presentation to us, and yeah. I can't remember if it was four thousand dollars or something like I, that. But I uh, think it depended on which um, method you wanted. Yeah, through you, Mayor um, Martin, based on the presentation uh, that was presented, and, and we can certainly double check the numbers, uh, it was $300 per month, uh, plus additional costs, depending on the number of cats and uh, um, the number of, basically, the amount of service that we, we require. Right. Okay. And mileage. No, that was with the other, is it mileage with the city too there, Bob? Yes, I believe there was a mileage charge as well. Okay. All right. Well, it's something to look at. Like, I really don't see why we don't have the same thing as we do with the dogs. Is you're allowed so many cat, cats and they have to be tagged. Um, but maybe I'm making things too simple here, but uh, um, we do have a problem. <laughs> so I know I wouldn't want 50 of them next door to me. So anyways, it's... Uh, that's just me speaking. Anyways, the uh, so the next one was the uh, and this one here it's got the completed and moved. So I take it these are things that you've moved from administration into facilities. Yes, they've shifted. So right. it was just to make it a little bit clean, cleaner, so that council understood where um, some of the increases were coming from and some of the decreases. So there again, that's why when you're seeing the numbers in departments up and down and all over the place, it's uh, so with the negative in the admin, that's there's a lot of stuff that's been shifted out of admin into other into other areas. Is that right, Wendland? Yes. Okay, so I don't know what move summer pool hangers winter display costs. Uh, what was that again? Can you like that's the so that's banner? The winter signs that go up on the poles, the snowflakes, okay, and the shooting stars. So that was um, previously in a min under economic development, and then we decided that that particular thing should really go into the parks and recreation department because they were um, normally handling that anyways. Okay. No, I don't see Hart here if he has anything there. It's, uh, that's the only one I'm not seeing right now. So just so he knows. Um, if he has any, you can jump in. But uh, OK. Good. You good? Keep, keep going. OK. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyways, there's some things there that if anybody wants to speak to as far as the administration, um, things have been juggled around. But uh, we don't have any numbers to go with them here as far as uh, we can look back at the other sheets, but there again. Um, so in the facilities, the cleaner position is something that uh, Wendelin had asked if there's any way of dealing with it today. Um, I don't know what council's thoughts are, but it's something that's hanging out there right now. And uh, if we knew we were going to do it, you can speak to it, Wendelin. Um, it's just, um, it would start the ball rolling, so to speak, to start cost savings in 2021, since we're already in January. Um, and we would like to increase the service levels in some of the facilities and add some facilities such as the OPP station that's not currently being done. Um, and now with all the new um, lockdown um, things with uh, COVID, um, we feel as management that it's important to increase those um, areas for cleanliness and uh, make sure that everything's done um, correctly and, and just move it 
kind of along before the actual budget um, gets passed. Okay. Anything on that from council? Go ahead, Perry. No, I'm just going back to the uh, public washrooms. Okay. Yeah, well, if we could just talk with the cleaner position first, and then we'll go, we'll go to that. We'll move down the list there. But uh, this council, what's your thoughts on trying to get this position moving? Um, is it going to stay in the budget? And um, if it is, like Wendelin says, we can get things going and start to get things cleaned up. But uh, uh, what's your thoughts on that? I guess it's on the uh, public washroom. No, on the cleaning. Oh. Oh, the, yeah, okay. position. yeah, we had a good discussion on it a few weeks ago about, uh, you know, looking at a different method of uh, taking care of our, our buildings and, uh, um, and adding a better, I guess, a better service, maybe. So uh, Wendland's thoughts were if we could get the ball rolling, if we knew this was going to stay in there, we could deal with it today. Um, if not, we can leave it till the 27th. It's not a huge, like, can I go ahead, Hart? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Jim, in terms of getting it going. Um, I think it's something where there might be a bit of savings for us. Uh, but um, just another thing, like I said, that we've been talking about for a long time, we need to get off the plate. Um, yeah, I'll just, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that for right now, but um, the one thing I was going to say was moving forward, there was items on that list in terms of what was going to be cleaned that I had questions about and thought possibly might not, didn't have to be on that list. So before the list of what needs to be cleaned goes out, I'd like, uh, I think council should have a look at that. Okay. And I can't see Dave. So Dave, do you have anything to add to this part of it? Yeah, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see that last item left on there. I wasn't in agreement to go out to tender for a for an outside contractor in the first place. So I think we should bring it back in to our own department, our own. Okay, so we'll leave it for the 27th and see where it uh, goes there. That's that's good. Is that okay with you, Barry? Yeah, it's uh, it looks promising, and I'm I have to go along with Hart there on. Uh, um, some of the facilities, how many times that they wanted them cleaned and so on and so forth. I think it was, some of it was extensive. So I think it's, we should all have a look at it again. Okay. All right then. So we'll leave that on until the 27th there, Wendelin. And, uh, okay. uh, and in between now and then, you know, council can get in and talk to staff, go over those things and, uh, and see if we can have a, have it, you know, possibly ready for the 27th that you could get something moving. Yeah, so that will be under Ryan. So if they want to contact Ryan and discuss um, how that would be rolled out um, with the position, then he could give you the best um, advice there. Okay. All right, then. Um, so Barry, you were talking about the washrooms there. Do you want to? Um... Yeah, I'm not in favor of it at all because we don't own the building. We don't own the property. Um, and, you know, the chamber is supposed to be a business person's uh, ball yeah. game. It's, uh, it's not uh, the taxpayer. Um, I know being on the chamber a few years back, uh, we didn't have enough people from businesses there to even have a meeting sometimes. We didn't have a quorum. And I noticed when we put out the, uh, the notice this year that we had one person apply, we wanted two from the town and two from, or, and two in the township. We have one person from the township apply. So that tells me that the business people in town aren't really interested. You know, yeah. they look at it that way. I, I just can't see pumping that kind of money over there when uh, we really don't need to. There's there only two people and it's for four months you know, two students. Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I, that's my thoughts on it anyway. So, yeah, and that's, uh, I had actually wrote down here that, uh, like, as far as a budget item, I think 
we have to have a lot of discussion on it. But I, when we when I keep talking about priorities and, and strategic planning, um, I know we've all had different ideas. And uh, you know, I talked to Hart a couple of weeks ago. He threw something right off the top of his head, and uh, with regards to maybe another place that that could be. And uh, I think there's a lot there's there's a lot more discussion needs to be had with this personally. And uh, um, you know, we can. You know, I think it could come off the budget list, but uh, as far as I, I think there's more discussion around that that item personally. I don't know what council thinks, but uh, uh, what do you think? Do I'm you not opposed. That? Sorry, I'm go not, ahead, Dave. I'm not opposed to a, an outside facility that's done properly. I just don't think that's the spot for it. And if it's going to be uh, spend that kind of money, it should be for the for the tourist trade, you might say, uh, not just for the chamber, but I have real reservations about being it in there. So yeah, discussions, okay. yes, yes, I fully agree. Good, yeah, okay, Hart, go ahead. Yeah, I just, I agree with the rest of council. Um, I think the idea is good, the, the location is not, and um, it's nice to see we're all on the same page, so hopefully, uh, we can get this moving forward too, and just in terms of maybe finding a different location for it. Yeah. So, oh. okay. So I think it's pretty safe to pull that off. The that won't be discussed on the twenty seventh, uh, Wendelin. It's uh, something okay. that'll be. It'll probably come back again this year, maybe, but uh, not for this budget. And we could also look at it when um, we do the strategic um, That's planning. Right. That's yeah. right. Okay. All right. And. Uh, so the capital items, uh, um, decision on which capital items for 2021 from facilities master plan. So that's kind of what we talked about earlier. We can, uh, Ryan's the man there for the facilities. So um, I would recommend talking to him over the next week or so and just uh, on any questions you have with regards to those items that are listed on there. Um, I think Ray's here. The one thing I see is budget's gone down, like he's down at 0.1% or something like that. Uh, um, but I see that the master plan was removed off of there. Is that how that went down so quick? Or because I kind of wonder why we took it off. But uh, um, anyways, it's uh, is Ray there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you guys more or less weren't for the master plan at this time for 2021. So it was removed and that money was used to offset other things. Okay. That's why it went down, correct, Wendelin? Yes. And that we were gonna look at it um, for future budgets and um, when that was gonna be rolled out. So, so with it being such a big cost, Ray, is there any way of putting like a, you know, like a, Kind of like we did with some other things where you just start at least started in a reserve to uh um you know maybe over two or three years and then we can bring it out so it's not a spike in the in a future budget because it's something that's going to have to be done eventually here and what i don't know if was, we need a better price like i've seen i've seen everything from thirty thousand to sixty thousand so it's quite a range um I don't know if you have a fine, I guess it depends how deep we want to go into it. I'm just, just asking, uh, you know, it's nice that you've dropped it down, but if we're going to have this come back, you know, in the future here, it might be good to start planning. It probably should have been in the first place when, when Barry signed it there back in, <laughs> what year was that? 90, 90. something. Yeah. Yeah. Right so. <laughs> Well, it must, it must have been a good one then, eh? <laughs> 93. Yeah, it kind of while. this long. So, anyways, I just know Kevin Monica just did theirs, and uh, um, it's something that, you know, I think you're supposed to do every once in a while, and uh, just a thought to look at. I'll probably talk to you more about it later, but uh, if there was a way of putting something in there to, to start planning for, so you, so you can do it here in the future without spiking the taxes. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look into it more this year. And with this COVID and everything like that, you're probably not going to get anybody to come out anyhow and start doing. So sure. 
we'll let it ride this year, do some more planning, and I'll bring some more stuff to council on how far in depth you want to go. Okay, sounds good. So, so it won't be on the budget this year, anyways. Even as far as the reserve, that's fine. Yeah. So, okay. Um, that's the bottom of that list. I don't know if there's anything else that uh, we did the library and we did that one, Bianca, I think at the beginning. Yeah. So is there anything council wants to see come forward on the 27th as far as uh, to help you move, start moving this thing along? I think that's the idea today is to get back in the mode here of the budget. We've been away for a few weeks and uh, had the holidays in between. Um, you can't do anything else now that you're locked in the house with the budget. So, um, other than study it. So anyways, uh, go ahead, Perry. Yeah. The only, the only other thing is uh, what I mentioned, um, I guess on Tuesday was the, um, water and sewer rates, you know, affecting our, our small businesses and big businesses, our, our, um, population in general, um, there's a lot of things to consider here, and uh, I would like to see the uh, the increase wave for this year because people are struggling, and some have lost jobs. Some are, you know, cracking up in the whole ball of wax. It's it's not uh, it's not funny. It's it's great for maybe people who've got money to pay these things, but there's older people that are, you know don't even know whether they're going to be able to afford groceries this year or not, because everything is going up. Um, people have lost jobs. It's so there, that's the reason. And I've been approached by a couple of people and, and, uh, I, I can fully understand where they're coming from. And, and, uh, I think COVID can even cover some of our expenses here. So okay. I'll leave it. Okay. Hart, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know if we're getting off topic here, but it's kind of along the same lines as what Barry's talking about in that um, moving forward, obviously we don't know how long this COVID is going to go on for, but I've been approached by some people and I was actually asked a rather interesting question the other day about, um, I guess, you know, um, funding or helping out local businesses in terms of funding. Now, what I told this person was, you know, there's plenty of funding resources through the feds or the province, um, through the CERB, but what uh, they brought, well, basically what it was is they brought attention to me certain, certain places, <laughs> that restaurants can still be open and whatnot, but certain businesses have been shut right down. So in terms of us as a town, would we be willing to waive, say their water bills you know, whatever, because really their business has been closed down through no fault of their own. Now, I put it to them then the fact that we, the municipality, municipality of HBM, were, aren't the ones, you know, creating this lockdown. But they still put it back to me in the fact that, no, but we are a municipality and we should be, you know, looking out for our citizens, which I thought was a, a fairly good point. So I just put that to the rest of council in terms of you know, there are certain businesses, that, like obviously most of them are still open somewhat and can get some kind of revenue, but there are, the one that was brought to my attention were say hairdressers in terms of they're shut right down. So, but they, you know, they're still getting a water bill and still having to pay a rate. So whether it be some kind of reduction, some kind of, you know, wave waiver, I don't know, but I think moving forward, this is something we should keep in the back of our minds because I don't see this going away anytime soon. And as Councillor Pomeroy, Pomeroy referenced, uh, there's a lot of people suffering. And I think as this goes on, that number is only going to increase. So we should get ahead of that and start thinking about, you know, possibly ways that we can help these people moving forward. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Uh, I, agree. I agree with uh, both comments. Oh, that's for sure. There are people hurting and we need to do everything we can. Uh, at the same time, COVID is going to affect our ability to pay our bills too. Um, unless we can ask Aqua to 
do something for us and so on and so on. So I think we just have to be careful and think it out really clearly. I want to support and help those businesses that are suffering as much as we can. Uh, but it, it, for me, it's not going to be a snap decision. I, I got to have a lot of information. Uh, are any of the other municipalities within Ontario doing the same thing? I don't know. So I'm going to have to do some digging here before the, this discussion comes up at our next council meeting to try and make a calculated or a, some kind of a decision. And yet at the same time being compassionate. So they're paying their water bills, their sewer bills. It's, 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 I mean, yeah, we'll have to have a good discussion on it. Yeah. So I think uh, maybe, I don't know if Laura would have the time to look at it, but uh, I had suggested that through the Economic Development Committee, we had the, uh, and, and I don't know if Wendland's had a chance to look at it, but we did have that CIP money and it wasn't used last year as far as uh, um, for facades and things. And I just wonder if there's a way of, I think that's what Selwyn did is they created a grant system out of that. Now it was a lot more than what I would, what I was thinking, but um, if there is some way, like you say, of helping here, maybe there's a way of rejigging that, uh, that, reserve that we had for the facades or the CIP and and use it for some sort of uh, some help for businesses. We are getting off track on the on the uh, the house thing there as far as or the water rates. I guess they kind of go together and uh, maybe Wendelin you can show us uh, you can bring something back on the impact of doing that if there is any impact. I think there is some help there and it is a terrible year. So I guess we're all trying to be compassionate here as far as for what everybody's dealing with. And maybe if there is a way of doing it, you could let us know what the, what, what the impact is, if there's any, maybe we can get away with it for one more year, like Barry's saying. So um, yeah. that would be good so information. Just, just a couple of things on that. So the sewer and water um, from the Tuesday council meeting, I calculated what the difference would be. Um, so, the water would be $2,191 um, if it did not increase overall. And the sewer would be $11,829 overall if there was no increase. So the total of those two is $14,020. So um, I bring that today um, for council to think about for the 27th. Um, so as far as the taxes, um, there was an announcement that came out that the province was going to implement something to help um, business taxpayers with their um, education rates and also some sort of grant um, thing that will be rolled out through the municipalities um, for um, business tax relief. So I did receive an email um, early this morning from the province, but I haven't had time to review it yet, but I'll have that for the 27th. Okay, that's good. Barry, go ahead. And on that, um, we also have uh, probably 35 new builds in town to uh, calculate into the new, uh, the new water and sewer rates with with our uh, Peterborough housing development, we got uh, five new houses over over here across the road, um, and two more to be built. So, and there's been a couple downtown. So it would uh, would probably cover more than cover what uh, what the total was. But anyway, yeah. I know I know you're going small businesses. When Lundbach, the whole thing with his, the other poor fellow out there working and losing their jobs. It's easy for us to sit here. We got enough money to pay our bills. If you make good money, um, you know, it, it just completely turns it around. We got to be compassionate and think of uh, the people that, that can't afford this increase. And uh, for a year, you know, we're, we're, we're wanting to go here, wanting to spend money here. Uh, over there and we got we got to look after our own and we we got to be a bit compassionate 
Uh, I'll leave it at that. Okay. If I could ask one more question on this, and then I'll, I'll yep. leave it just just for information. When, Luna, at what point in time, or are they already paying their water and sewer bills at Peterborough Housing Corp? Um, we were hoping that was going to come online in January, but they're um, not. John can probably give you more of an estimate on that. Um, but they've been delayed. They're still doing um, final inspections, et cetera, on it. So it has not uh, been implemented yet for the sewer and water at that building. So are they on metered? Uh, no. Um, I'm not sure on the commercial side. Peter and John can probably talk to you on that. Um, but there would be 24 residential um, connections there and one commercial. Thank you. Okay. Only one commercial? One Pardon? Commercial. Is there only one commercial? One commercial for the common area of the building, yes. Oh, well, how about for, uh, um, oh, yeah, sure. VON, is it going in there? That, I believe, would be part of the commercial area that they share um, in the offices. Okay, and then what's on the other side is, uh, oh. Community care. Community care. Yep. So, I mean, like, you say there's 24 units there, there's, there's at least 26 or more. Yeah, so okay. that would have to be a discussion maybe for Peter um, to decide what um, the number of units that should be charged on the commercial one. I was aware of one, so. Okay, so that's uh, so that's going to come back next week. And in the meantime, like I keep saying, um, get in and, and if we can get some real numbers here. Why don't I think like Barry says with the new with the numbers that are over there and the new builds around can we get away with it for one year? So, um, yeah. you know, as long as it's not gonna be a big spike next time that you know, everybody's saying. So that's, that's what we need to hear. Yeah, so it wouldn't affect the overall tax increase because it would just reduce the amount that would be put in the reserve for sewer and water okay. because it's a zero effect on the budget overall. Okay. So we can deal with that on the 27th if we need to have a, yep. or on the next meeting even like I know we talked about it before but if we need to have, make a resolution that we hold them for 2021 um, we can deal with that at the next meeting is that okay Barry? Yeah yeah it's fine with me um, so we're going to have uh, someone uh, <laughs> I got the full screen again um, have someone um, send out all the uh, information from this meeting and we'll have to uh, meet with the appropriate uh, managers for to uh, for to discuss this I guess eh? yeah yeah be and we could be more prepared I was hoping that this would be uh, get everybody so we can see the appropriate people whether it's Ryan John Wendland uh, Peter or Ray and let's maybe we can get something moving here and try and uh, you know, deal with this budget and, and get something. It's been really hard with the Zoom, but it's been a good experience. Uh, um, you know, at least we're not, everything's still moving forward and that's our big thing here. So um, we've had our challenges, but uh, um, we're doing the best we can with what we have. So um, anyways, it's, uh, was there anything else with regards to today's meeting and, and the summary that we went through? Does anybody have any questions before we adjourn? Seeing none. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I might yeah. have one. So, okay. Uh, just one question, Ray. Where's our new fire truck? You there, Ray? Um, I can, okay, there I am. Um, it's sitting there. The it's back. The radios came in just before Christmas, so that's a plug and play. And the guy's putting the lettering on it. Okay, it will be in service shortly then, eh? Yep. Good, good. I was okay. beginning to wonder if that's on Tuesday it was uh, 
five months to the day for the delivery. So uh, it's going to be a year old before we see it. Yep. I'm surprised we even got it. <laughs> um, listening to the dealer I was talking to the other day, there's nothing around. There's nothing coming in. I think these 2021s or 2020s are going to be collectors because nobody has any. So, okay. All right. So if there's nothing else, we'll uh, um, I'll look. Do we need a confirming bylaw? Uh, was there any motions made there, Bob? No, through you, Mayor Martin, there were no motions made. We do not need a confirming bylaw. All right, so I think there's somebody. Barry, are you going to adjourn this meeting? Uh, adjourn this meeting, please. Okay, and Hart's going to second it. So all in favor of that? And I can't see Deputy Mayor Jarreau, but I think he's, he's, he's game. So, okay. All right, thanks, everyone, and uh, uh, we'll get to work now.